is Marvel Phase 4 destroying the MCU universe? We're going to talk about it. Spoilers up ahead for the ending of She-Hulk. Welcome back to Azar. My name is Nick and I have Kyle here with me. Pecos with the zero on Instagram. Go check him out. He's a super talented artist. He has a thing for She-Hulk. And <laughs> we've been talking has a about She-Hulk. She <laughs> we've been talking about She-Hulk here. And um, yeah, I have different opinions on it. Mm, it's tough. Uh, a lot of questions. Hopefully Kyle will answer for me because he knows comic books a lot better than me. So maybe he can fill the gaps and ease my mind. So I think the MCU is... I think this phase, phase four, is destroying the legacy it left in phase okay. three. Okay. Please elaborate. Um, they're destroying all the characters that built it. They're basically destroying the pillars. All the pillars, all the heroes, they're they're destroying them and then they're giving them to someone else. Like Hawkeye's they're gonna be stepping down. And I and I get it because it's like I have an I have a counter argument to my own point. What do you do from here? But it's like they they spend three 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 phases building up the Infinity Stones, right. and then like in Loki, I get it; those aren't the most power powerful things in the universe. But by just doing that, it 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 basically like destroys whatever was was there. You know what I mean? It's like oh, so someone else could have came in and just saved the universe. You know, there was no need for Tony to die. You know, at that point, you know, what I mean, like technically a celestial could have came in, you know, and, and and this happens obviously with comic books. It's like anime, right? Everything has to get bigger and bigger right. to to always has to be like galaxy, multiple galaxies. And now it's like, you know, Planet Hulk. And, you know, it's got to keep going bigger and bigger. And I, I get that. But it just becomes <laughs> Gurren Logan. I get it. Yeah. And it just feels like we went backwards with She-Hulk a little bit by breaking mm -hmm. the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't like a huge fan of the show. I was never a fan of She-Hulk, you know, in the comic books and stuff like that. So I was just watching it ca casually. I was a little thrown off that it wasn't a superhero show. It was a, like they said in the last episode, it's a, it's a witty or it's a it, courtroom, it, com you know, yeah. comedy basically. So it's, yeah, yeah which, which is what they went for. And it, I just wasn't expecting that. And it was just very interesting that by breaking the pillars and just like cutting off loose ends to a storyline and Wayne's whirling it, you know, it's like Wayne's world. You know, the alternate yeah. endings, which works for a comedy, you know, with the guys in, yeah. in, in a garage. But you have an established universe here and like bring in the fact that like, Kevin Feige controls everything. It just it just breaks the wall too much, in my opinion, <clears throat> where it's just like if this happened with Lord of the Rings and it was like, oh, it was a man drawing the story the whole time. And it like breaks the lore like, oh, this was just a story in a book, you know, which it was. It is a story from a book, but if they did that, then it's like, you know, then it's like, oh, oh, okay. Like it just kind of cuts out all the, the meanings and everything that was built up to it. Yeah. Like, like the whole, the whole thing with, 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 uh, Kevin and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, like, I'm like, okay, so what did they try to say with this series? Cause I'm not sure if they're going to do a second series. I, I was yeah, reading it's that the lowest it's kind rating. Of iffy. Yeah. Yeah. So like, that's the thing I'm like, so what's like the message they were trying to convey is that like, like, okay, so is it about subverting the superhero movie genre in some mm -hmm. way? Right? Like, I mean, the points they seem to raise like are decent ones, right? I mean, like easy grabs, like things are very formulaic, yeah. right? They're, they're, they're kind of predictable, but they're still entertaining, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then, uh, it, you know, it, it nods to like all the interconnected narratives, like turning it all into something very homogenous. Mm -hmm. And then like, but then at the same time, like, be because it's all being presented to us through the very corporation it is seeming to criticize, like, it kind of comes off as inauthentic, Yeah. right? It's just like, <clears throat> okay, so we're just taking a dig at ourselves, right? Yeah. But it's like, well, then what is that? It's, that's not even a message at that point. Like, yeah. It know. reminds me of the scene from Wayne's World when he, the sponsor comes on the show. <laughs> And, and he's like, he's like, oh man, I don't want the sponsor on the show. It's like, you have to, because he's paying for it. It's like, you know, so it's like, you know, if they wanted this thing and then they're like, you know, he, he's an ass winker or whatever, you know what I mean? Or, you know, he's like, he's like making fun of him the whole time. He's like, dude, honey, you did great. Everyone was laughing. Cause like literally they're just making fun of their, their overlords, you know, the whole time. Yeah. And it's it just, it's just. It well, at Noah's Arcade, we like to say there's two of everything. So there's well, thank you for being on Wayne's World. It was informative and stimulating. And I get it with, with Deadpool. Breaking the fourth wall works. That's mm -hmm. very dead Deadpool-y. And it because wasn't in yeah. the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I know it is now. 
So I'm curious what they're going to do with that. After seeing what they do with She-Hulk, I'm kind of worried what they're going to do <laughs> with with that power of being able to break the fourth wall. But it worked because like you can see some of the Marvel X-Men and the Fox thing, but it was separate than the Avengers coming together to defeat the evil. You know what I mean? Right. Like it takes place in a, and it's supposed to be in a real world. You know, obviously we're getting into the multiverse now and like Loki, it didn't bug me as much with, with the, the stones because it's still in the world, right? They're able to jump to the right. different universes and stuff. But like once he starts jumping to our world and he sees Disney plus, you know, it's just like, like if, if that would have happened in Loki, it would have been like, what, mm. you know, I'm like, and I just feel like that happened with the show. Like I, I, I try not to even think of this show as a MCU show. Okay. Okay. Cause it doesn't, it doesn't fit in, in my mind. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It, it just, I mean, and then I was also trying to figure out, maybe you can help me out here. Who was the audience for this? Cause Marvel is a kid's show. All the movies are kid friendly for the most part. Right. Obviously Disney plus they're experimenting and doing stuff, but like there's a lot of sexual stuff in this show for kids. I mean, then I don't think it's for kids. But I'm just saying, but you would think because of the brand Marvel, oh, you would you would because let your kids brand, watch yeah. that, right? And the, then when you the, see your kids like, oh, she's trying to hook up at the end of every episode. She has mm-hmm. a hookup or she's really just trying to get hooked. Her, the whole episode is her trying to get hooked up by the you end know, of the episode. It's got like a rom-com vibe. Which, yeah. which is fine, yeah. but it's like, it's not what you thought. Like a, like you when you see the title, when you see the, the Disney logo, you yeah. think it's going to be safe. Right. Because it's like kid friendly. It's like, oh, it's Disney. Marvel kind of established it's pretty much safe for kids. Like even when it comes to violence, obviously, it's been getting a little bit more grittier and more realistic and stuff. Mm-hmm. But that's their brand. DC's the dark one. Punisher was the dark one. Netflix's yeah. Daredevil was dark. And like you knew it was dark, like because it was like, you know, special ratings you have to watch and stuff. So some of the themes in this, I'm like, who is this for this audience? So, I mean, I think we touched on it on a couple of other episodes, mm-hmm. but like, it's not like it, it's not like the, the series was any like one narrative or like conveying mm-hmm. any particular message over the entirety of it. I think it had different messages throughout, but like, I would say like the one that sort of had a common thread was, um, uh, women in society and also like celebrity and identity, mm, right? Okay. Like, because very clearly the common theme is is Jen coming to terms with her having these Powers. two different sides of her mm-hmm. and people seeing them as two distinct different sides and yes. not as her being the same person because she is, at the end of the day, she is both of those people, right? <clears throat> yeah. But society chooses not to see her that way, right? Like, like just like, for for example, like at the end where the where the news anchor's outside the courtroom and he's like, and and you know he's like, tell tell all our tell all of our viewers out there like who are you wearing in, into the court today and and he's like and she's like, okay and just walks off and and then he just goes the difficult diva of law herself and I'm like, see like inst you know it's just like instant like because she decided not to answer your question, she is now labeled a difficult diva, right? Mm. Like that sort of thing, right? Like maybe it was a pre-existing thing, but I'm like, I'm like, okay, like, you know, um, I feel that it's, you know, it's, it's both a commentary of, of women in the workplace and also a commentary on identity and celebrity. Mm -hmm. And then she's, she's a lawyer. Yep. Not the greatest lawyer. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know obviously i mean it was fun I, like the moment i want to say that that's the writing's fault yeah well i mean i think the writers did this by the end anyways to get out of all the writing issues interesting i think this was like they were like what do we do oh, like, right they, yeah breaking they kind the fourth of wall and, they yeah. kind of really ripped themselves into a corner they had the mm-hmm. group of all males that were like very very angsty towards she hulk and then like we had you know i mean it's just like this whole thing that was just like really compounding and just like really going and then it's like then you cut it which i actually was like oh this is cool what she's going through right now like when i when at the beginning of the episode i'm like oh cool she's getting a a character development like you know development moment like iron man he has his scene right where he's at rock bottom and that's when he really you know embraces his his technology and his skills and he finds a way to get out and then he comes up with the solution like i need to stop war yeah. And I have to do this myself. You know what I mean? Like, kind of, And that's like where Iron Man comes from. And it's like, I thought it was like her finally going to that place 
where she's going to get her heroes like this is what I need to do or, you know, or that the words come in from Daredevil. If I can't help in the courtroom, I can help on the streets or something. You know, what I mean, like it's like, you know, she gets her her reason to, to be a hero or, you know, just to yeah. do something in this Marvel universe and it just ends with like a dinner party. <laughs> I was just like, what? Like Dare- barbecue. Dare- yeah. Daredevil was there. Hulk came back with his son. I was just like, wait, what's going on? Like what happened with the blood? Where's red, red Hulk. You know, they could have did something with red Hulk to introduce yeah. him or, you know, and it's just like, it's just like, Oh, there, there is no one stole my blood, which was like half the plot point of the whole movie. And it's just like, you re- yeah. you, you removed everything. That was building up to her character arc, which what you thought, you know, you were watching. And then it was just all gone. It was just really weird. Yeah. It was just really weird. Like it was bad, bad writing. It really was like because it was just like when you're confused like that, it, it's it's going down to like if it takes if you're ever taken out of the show, then they're not they're not doing their job. Right. I wonder I wonder if. Because you mentioned Daredevil and and of course Hulk some um, Hulk son uh, <laughs> Sakaar, from Sakaar. Whatever, yeah. I forgot his name. Uh, but, but that's that's alluding to I think like She Hulk in part was servicing an announcement or hinting you know it's it was the vehicle for hinting at new properties coming out. What about her MCU, story? Right, right, exactly. It just but sucks. at the same yeah, at the same time though, we didn't really feel that we connected with the character a whole lot, and and that like. You know, and 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 now we're being th- sh- thrown into new potential, you know, franchises, right? Yeah. Because apparently, obviously, since um, Hulk has a son, that either implied two things for me: either they're going to do Young Avengers, or mm-hmm. they're going to do World War Hulk. Okay. Probably the Young Avengers, because we're talking about the next generation thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, with uh, um, with Daredevil, they might do Defenders with Daredevil and She Hulk. <clears throat> yeah, um, good. But I don't know. He's 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 getting his own show on Disney Plus. Daredevil is? Yeah. Snap. All right. And King Kingpin's coming back too. Yes, the so, same guy. Yes, the same, same guy. But like that that was another thing that bugged me with the Marvel Cinematic Universe when he fought the the Hawk girl or I don't know her name. Hawkeye chick. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know her name. I don't know her super name. But she was able to take him out. And it like it, it basically undercut everything Daredevil had to go through for three seasons. Huh? You know what I mean? Good it's just point. like and it, and, it, and it undercut probably one of the best villains story yeah. arcs to ever be on film because now he's just like yeah, I'm this bad guy. You know what I mean? It's like now he, he's just some he was schmuck. so deep. His his yeah. storyline was so deep and rich, and you really understood his character and stuff. But now he's just I'm the big bad guy behind everything. Oh yes, you're gonna do what I do. It's like what like yeah uh, it's tough like, that's it's, a good point yeah it, that's what i mean by destroying what previously came because it's just like they're taking away the the good the good moments we lo- know and love and what built the mcu what gave it its credibility and i just feel like phase four is just like they're ignoring it's more phase ignore <laughs> i think i think that actually brings an interesting uh like existential thought to it all because if if like you said in the beginning if you know phase three was this climactic battle for the for the like the salvation of the universe uh, yeah. right it's kind of like okay you either go two routes which is the loki route which is like dig deeper expand the universe even more to the multiverse mm-hmm. right um and with doctor strange and stuff like that or you you kind of like well after peace reigns it's kind of boring or like, or it's not boring. You focus on smaller stories, yeah, right. And we got that with with uh, um, Falcon and, and Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. That was actually great. I liked that. Right. That was a smaller story. The stakes were smaller, but they still felt critical. Yeah. Right. We didn't really get much of that in She Hulk, actually. In no. in hindsight, like that's the thing. I know, like I, I like so that's the thing. I still was entertained by the show, but now looking now that we have a complete season yep you can you can go back and review it it all Mm -hmm. in retro yeah like it's like well Mm -hmm. it it could have been executed better yeah you know and yeah i mean i was kind of bummed what they kind of did to daredevil i liked some of the moments he was there but it was also like why is he here and i get he's a lawyer but it's just Mm -hmm. like the costume thing was just kind of weird like he was there for a costume because he has he has his guy 
That's true. He, yeah, he, he has does. a costume guy. I mean, I don't remember him dying. I mean, but well, I, obviously, I don't know. I can't remember if, now. If I recall, <clears throat> was the Netflix Daredevil a part? Of, technically, a part of the MCU back then? Yeah, they even mentioned Avengers. Remember, they had like the posters of New York and like, oh You're yeah, right. when the aliens attacked and stuff. Huh. Yeah. Weird. And now okay. it's on Disney Plus, so it's officially canon. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Jeez. So it's just All it's right. it's just like it's kind of a bummer, but. I'm very curious where what their plan is for the next phase because you don't see it's it's tough right because like they have Wakanda two or yep. Black 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 Panther two, mm-hmm. um, which is tough because obviously the the actor died. Preston right. Peace, he was a very talented actor. Yeah. I really liked him, um, but so now they're having to pass his mantle off. Mm-hmm. They're passing off Captain America's mantle. Like everyone's mantle's getting passed off. Yeah. And it's it's just and it's tough, right? Cuz that's like the people we know and the people we grew up with. And it's, it's really tough seeing the next generation of people coming in, but you know, it it's tough. It's like what are they going to do? They have to keep making money off of toys and merchandise and stuff like that. I'm just I'm shocked they haven't done anything with the X-Men yet. Cuz that right. that could really revamp everything. Which we which uh if you want to count it as one or not, we got a little hint of that. In, in the, the breaking the fourth wall oh, section, she's, yeah, like, she's like, "What about and, and you know maybe bring in some X Men?" Mm. And then she looked at the camera, you know. Yeah. So but. I'm I'm off. I'm struggling with it. It's not like I hate everything they're putting out, mm-hmm. but it's I'm definitely struggling with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't know if it's just the hype's gone after Thanos. Like it was like, "Woo, that was a great." I mean, Gar- Guardians of the Galaxy three is coming out. I'm a big fan of James Gunn and Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. So he might be able to revamp it again, just like he kind of did when he did Guardians. You know what I mean? Because right. he kind of really opened up the fun space world. And then the, yes. even Thor started taking from that, like with the colors and everything. Because Thor was very much like, dust thou not. And then like, yeah. it, it's like another example with Thor. He's like you know a Shakespearean I mean? parody. <laughs> Thor's just in a loop. He keeps trying to have to figure out That's who true. he is. And it's just like, there has to be a better storyline for Thor than trying to figure out who he is every every movie. Yeah. Like every movie, even in the Avengers movies, every movie he's trying to figure out who he is. And it's I mean, just like, even, even with Thor, I mean, if we even take a look at some of the story, like if we go to um, uh, the uh, the Thor story, the, the comic book storyline between him and... Uh, um, Gorm or a uh, uh, Gore, yes. right? With him and Gore, uh, you know how we talked. To, you know we talked about this earlier about his his past self, his present self, and his future self. Yeah, it's interesting because like in that in that comic series, you get a clear distinction of the character development that Thor clearly still has yet. To, young Thor clearly still has yet to do, mm. and he does some of that development. And then you also see future Thor as the consequence of his actions and how, Mm. and then how that's changed him. Right. But then they wrote present day Thor as kind of holding the status quo. And it really didn't, there wasn't any development on his end. So like that also can sometimes be reflected from the source material Mm. as well. Right. Um, So I don't know. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, obviously I like Taika Waititi. I just think he missed the mark with comedy. It was just a little too much. It's kind of like breaking the fourth wall a little, a little yeah. too much. It's and you, you take a gamble. And when I want my Taika Waititi, I uh, I watch what we do in the shadows. Oh, so good. That's oh, that's, that's so what I want. Yeah. And Jojo Rabbit, <clears throat> very good. Yes. But yes, I'm curious what you guys think down below about Marvel Phase Four. Um, yeah. I'm very curious, like where they're gonna go with this. I know they have a lot of shows. I didn't even watch Miss Marvel. Did you watch Miss Marvel? Nope. <clears throat> so. Nope. It's tough because I don't I don't feel excited to watch these like I was excited to watch the movies. Yeah. Like I remember lining up at midnight to see all the midnight showings when the Iron Man came out, Iron Man Two, like you name it. I was like there for the midnight showings. I was like it was like a thing, and now it's just like it's it's tough. It's really dang, tough. dude. Was it was it the content that changed, or did we change somewhere along the way? Well, we probably now? changed. <laughs> And on that note, follow <laughs> Kyle on Instagram. Peck with a zero on Instagram. He's a super talented artist. Go check him out. Follow him. He's an awesome guy. Uh, go to azar.space to get all the cool shirts he's designing and stuff like that. But then again, let us know really what you think about Marvels and where, where they're going with it. Are you excited? Are you not excited? Should they just shake it up like an like an etch a sketch and just start over? <laughs> let us know down below. And we'll see you on the next Azar. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Wow, dude, how you doing? How you holding Pretty up? good. Am I sounding pretty bad?
No, no, no. You, you, you still sound the same, but but still, I mean, just like.